G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. I thought for this video we'd take a quick look at this Dell PowerEdge T110 number 2 server that I picked up from a mate's computer business a couple of days ago. And uh, I'm going to, you know, fire off a few more hints about the project that I'm about to begin with him. But for this one, we'll take a quick look at this. So this is the PowerEdge. This is pretty much a standard Dell BIOS system. Now, before I uh, do anything with this server, the first thing I'm going to do is check to see if there's a BIOS update uh, out for it. I assume there is, but obviously I'll check for that. Um, You've you got to do that. It, Anytime you get a server that's um, aging a little bit or whatever you want to call it, I always check for a BIOS update, um, especially if it's going to go into a uh, production state. So we'll take a quick look at the memory. You'll see there it's got 8 gigs of DDR3 memory at 1600 megahertz. The proc's not too bad. It's a Xeon E3-1230V2 at 3.3 gig. Uh, obviously, I've got to turn on the virtualization. So that's got to come on. You'll see there that all the cores are available. Now it is a quad core CPU. And turbo mode is enabled. The SATA settings aren't really that much to rave about. You'll see there it's either got AACI or RAID. Now, I'm going to talk about the RAID for this. Um, in just a minute. Did I get that to RAID? Yes, I did. So I'll talk about the RAID settings uh, here very shortly. You'll see there you've got uh, boot mode levels. The integrated devices are pretty much standard. And obviously serial communications, you'll see there. Now when I picked this thing up a couple of days ago, the failsafe board rate was sitting at um, 115200, which was uh, surprising. And there's the BIOS. So pretty much a standard uh, Dell server BIOS, much like uh, other power edges uh, preceding this model. And as I said, um, when we had a quick sticky beak at this, I've, I've used these T110s in the past, and I've got to be honest with you, the server's on and it's dead quiet. I've seen these in heavy workload uh, environments where they've still been very quiet. Um, so... They're a wonderful server. As you can see there, it's just after five past eight on Saturday morning. Now what I want to do is take you into the RAID BIOS and explain more to you about this S100, drive, S100 RAID controller. So bear with me and I'll, uh, I'll reboot the computer. Sorry, I won't reboot the computer. I'll reboot the server. Here we are in the PERC S100 Virtual Disk Management uh, BIOS. And as you can see, he's got it re-rated into RAID 0, uh, equivalent to 1.8 terabytes. There are um, quite a number of drives in there. There's four 465 gig or 500 gig uh, SATA drives. However, I'm going to explain this S100 uh, virtual disk management uh, system to you because it's not exactly a true RAID management console re hardware software the Dell PowerEdge T110 came out with three RAID um, RAID controllers two software and one hardware you've got the S100, the S200 and the H300 now the S stands for software, the H stands for hardware this one specifically as you can see has the S100 now as I said in uh, the 100 uh, subscriber special setting up servers, that software rating was never a good thing. However, the S100 system is actually probably one of the better software type um, RAID systems uh, out there. Couple of reasons behind that. Number one is there is a marginal and somewhat slightly noticeable improvement in overall RAID performance compared to that of a hardware system, as in dedicated hardware. However, not every software RAID is going to offer you true redundancy. Now, I've seen this before on other software RAID levels. If you have a look here, we have four drives in RAID 0. Now, obviously, I am going to get rid of that. We're going to obviously make it possibly RAID 5 or RAID 1 or RAID 10 or something like that. But 
being a software kernel level RAID system, in some cases, not all cases, but in some cases, it's much like a Windows RAID, whereby, say you RAID disks 0 and 1. Now, in a RAID 1 configuration, if 0 falls over, 1 will run. However, not every software RAID system will do this. In actual fact, what, what has happened, and I've seen this on the S, uh, S100 uh, previously, that if drive 0 falls over in a RAID 1, drive 1 does not necessarily work. Reason being is because the cache control and the RAID format is actually on disk 0. Therefore, if you were going to use this as a production system, which luckily and I thank my friend for this, these drives are all enterprise class, perfectly balanced drives. So the failure uh, redundancy is improved between these four drives, ignore that, but essentially meaning that these four drives here are less likely to fail being enterprise class drives than say your standard run of the mill WD blue or WD green. Now, the project I'm getting involved with is an OpenStack project with my friend at his computer business, which is obviously going to hang off OpenBSD, and this is going to run OpenStack on Linux. Now, there's umpteen OpenStack's Linux variants I can take, but that's what he wants me to look into. That's what I'm going to look into. So, in the case of this system here, these four drives, obviously I will either put them into RAID 1 with a global hotspare, or RAID 5, but should drive zero fall over, it's quite likely the other three drives will, will essentially not pick up because it is kernel level RAID. Essentially, it is as it says, it's virtualized. Now, not virtualized as in virtual operating systems, it's a para-virtualized RAID emulation, I think it's probably the easiest way of saying it. So that's the PERC S100 Virtual Disk Management System. And um, look, the S100, the S200, and the H300s I've used have never fallen over catastrophically. And normally if a disk has failed, it's either been one of the bottom disks that's let go, allowing for the top couple to, uh, to run. The only thing I didn't show you uh, when we had a look at it, which I'll just do for you now... Oops. Just sent the coffee cup and everything flying then. Wasn't smart, was it? Oh, and I've broken the coffee mug. Doesn't matter. I'll just pick it all up. I'm still able to be drunk out of. Just no handle now. Okay, so here's the insides. Now, as I said, it's got 8 gig of RAM, but it does have two more uh, DIMMs in it, which I'll obviously be able to put some more RAM, so I may end up putting... I've got a couple of 1600 meg ECC um, DDR3 chip uh, RAM sticks lying around. Underneath, though, you might just be able to see it out there. We've got a little bit of expansion there. We've got uh, four PCI slots. We've got uh, one PCIe by one, two PCIe by two, and one PCIe by six. Sorry. Two PCIe by eight and one PCIe by sixteen line. So that's uh, that's the PowerEdge one ten server. Now you're probably going to ask me what exactly are we going to use this for? Well, now the red light up there, actually, I should tell you, is intrusion detection. This little button here. So the project's going to be an OpenStack project for cloud storage coming off my system here, and uh, I'm going to be uh, show you how to set up OpenStack uh, on Linux because I've done it before and uh, I'm going to do it again. Anyway, quick video there. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, stay tuned because we'll do, be doing some more work on this uh, Dell PowerEdge T110. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.